As we run through the last corner on our list for draft profiles that takes us back to Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama with their second cornerback that will be drafted in the first round, Terrian Arnold out of Alabama, the redshirt sophomore, 6 feet tall, 31 5 inch arms, 8 and 7 8 inch hands, 189 pounds from Tallahassee, Florida, 4 5 40, 1 5 4, 10 yard, 37 inch vertical jump, 10 9 broad jump, 2021 redshirt, 2022 freshman All-American, freshman All-SEC, played in 11 games with 7 starts, 45 tackles and an interception, 8 PBUs. In 2023, he was a first-team All-American, first-team All-SEC, 6th in the FBS with 5 picks, tied for 5th with 17 passes defended, 12 PBUs, and started all 14 games. Cavante, another Alabama corner, going in the first round. We talked about Kool-Aid. How does he differ from Terry and Arnold, or how does Terry and Arnold differ from Kool-Aid, and how do you see these two ranked, and maybe where does he fall, and is he in that mix for number two or number three corner? Oh, uh, well, absolutely. And first thing first, Nick Saban and them, they do that. This cornerback, this DBs, they they do this very, very well for them to have two guys uh, at top five at, at, um, at the position is something that that should be commended but it's nick saban so um we we pretty much come to expect that well obviously not any longer but when nick saban is on it we we know what to expect um uh, him and um him and kool-aid um i think it, it's funny because they're both i was about to say physic and physicality but with alabama you 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 play you have to play physical you 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 have to be able to um be able to stick your nose in um in in support uh, be able to cover be able to get your hands on people be able to play man coverage and i think that's something that terry arnold does very very well i think the one thing i will say that i saw more of terry arnold and not from kool-aid mckinstry is that terry plays more in the slot um so there's a little bit more versatility with uh with arnold but um they're pretty 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 similar um but i i, I might give the slight edge to terry and arnold um because of his his comp his comp is a uh, marshall Lattimore, um and i think one, one of the things we talked about as uh at, at corner fluid hips being able to change direction get in and out of breaks and been able to flip flip back in if you have to he does that really well uh but fluid hips and great explosion um in transition and recovery we talk about that fluid hips and recovery is two things that it's almost not almost essential it is essential because again guys are coming in year one at the wide receiver position and bringing the noise in the nfl and 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 we need to defenses need to be able to counteract that with corners like uh Terry Arnold, Nate Wiggins, Kool-Aid McKinstry, the guy, guys that we talked about, Mr. Mitchell in Toledo. We need to be able to have guys to counteract those guys because it we already know the NFL is already built for the offense and built for the offense to succeed. And it's already an uphill battle for defenders and def- especially DBs, corners specifically, but being able to have fluid hips and recovery speed and not get beat is my gosh, is 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 damn, damn how on the list. And I think the four five, I think he plays faster than Acrofonte, but any anything that concerns you, I mean, I know he maybe doesn't have the fastest speed, but he's physical. Any weaknesses and any team you see him going to, I think he will go off the board before Kool-Aid probably. Is that safe to say? Pro- probably. Depending on uh, depending on how your big board falls, um, I, I I like Terry a little bit better, um, but they they have and and I think because uh, uh, I don't think Kool Aid Kool Aid didn't run the forty, did he? No, but he probably would have been four or five. I'm sure. Four but but that's what I'm saying four. exactly because I I said that when we was talking about Kool Aid, I said he's probably about a four or five. That doesn't help a draft stock. He knew that, so why even you know what I'm saying? Why even run it? Um, so I, you know, that, that, that is a negative and that is a weakness, but typically the guys who aren't wildly fast 
are more physical at the point of attack. Um, he's very aggressive um, with uh, making plays downfield, um, shutting down screens and all the short game stuff. Um, despite his size, he was a big time tackler, really good with uh, with rapping. We really don't do. Uh, what we really don't see much of is uh, wrapping up and tackling. Um, he has some improvements in zone in uh, in his own coverage, but I think his bread and butter is the man coverage. He looks very confident. He looks very um, comfortable in um, in man coverage as opposed to uh, zone. But when we're going into the weaknesses, he's not great at zone. You know what I'm saying? He, he'll play it here and there, but. If you want him to succeed, he's a man. He he he's more of a man. Um, more of a man corner. Um, it, the, despite showing some improvement, but that's not what he does best. But obviously, you know those things can be um can be worked on. Um, sometimes, uh, and this is one of those things would come to speed. He can misjudge the trajectory of the deep ball, um, and that. That is a skill as well. I, we, we don't talk about that enough. That's a, a skill that the great wide receivers have. So, therefore, the great cornerbacks need to have the same type of skill, being able to track down the ball when it's 40, 50 yards down the field. Because the wide receiver, it, it comes a little bit more natural um, to them. But I feel like that's something, again, I got to nitpick when we're talking about the best. Um, similar to Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? And that first 15 yards, I love them. They're very, very, very aggressive in your face at the point of attack. But when we start getting to the 20s, 25s, 30s, it's it's a little um it's a little concerning. Um, and of course, you know, it be uh him being a little bit over aggressive, you know, that could cause penalties as well. It's funny you said the first 15 yards. I saw the next gen stats powered by AWS. Top speed at 10-yard split of all the cornerbacks. We may not get to all of these guys, but you can throw in something if you want, Cravante, because we usually cover guys in the first round. But Daquan Hardy out of Penn State, 19.86 miles per hour. Renardo Green out of Florida State, 19.36 miles per hour. Brian Watts, part of the Texas track team, 19.13. Um, Terry and Arnold, 18.40. And Miles Harden. 18.27. So some other names to look forward to that we may not get to, but other names who could be day two, day three guys. But carrying on that first 10 and 15, like you said with him and Cooley, I mean, you keeping up with these speedy guys, you got like that. Because that's that's where the game is won in those first couple of yards. For, for sure. But also, because they're more physical, if, if, the, if they could get their hands on these speedy, receive, uh, speedy receivers, you know, that, that 4-3 that all of them run will not be – <laughs> four three and like it's supposed to because if you get hands on them you can push them to more so where you want them to go as opposed to them running wild and doing whatever they want and you know blowing the top off the defense and all that so you know that's typically the trade-off not not crazy fast you got to be physical and coming from alabama that's what they do very 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 well and again they're only they're they're gonna go bottom probably bottom of the first round because of because this is not their draft this, this is not cornerback heavy heavy draft there are some there are some good ones and you even named some and when we're when talking about the speed and the the short the short speed um there are some good ones and you will find some good ones in the second round because the draft is heavy in other in other positions mainly the other side of the ball so. You know, these guys that we've been talking about thus far is going to find if, if they they're going to a playoff team. So it probably won't be as much as a struggle as going against a team that's, you know, having to rebuild. So, you know, like I said, the Steelers, the Ravens, um, the Cowboys, hopefully you don't go to the Cowboys. None, none of the ones we talked about because they're all really, really good. Um, those uh, who else down there, the, the, the Eagles, the, the Packers. Um, I don't know if uh, Jair Alexander, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with, with him. Um, like I said, the Dolphins, uh, Xavier Howard is no longer there. And the Steelers can always get another Steeler. The Ravens can always get another Raven. 
you know what I'm saying, Alabama, I feel like Alabama translates well to Pittsburgh and Baltimore just because the the the, the toughness that uh that comes with it. Also, um we we didn't talk about the uh the 49ers. Um you can <laughs> what 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 wouldn't it be crazy if any of these guys that we talked about get added to an already elite level defense? It's like they didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's like they went from Alabama to a supercharged Alabama. You know what I'm saying? But um I, I you know, you know what I'm saying? This he he's another great um Alabama corner. And I think he will do well wherever he goes, especially if he goes to a team that's kind of already established. As you mentioned, some teams, Gravante, also the Buccaneers at 26. The Cardinals have another first at 27. The Bills at 28. I mean, the Bills, what don't they need? I'm sure we'll get into that in the next couple of days. Oh, boy. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> and the Lions, the Lions at 29. So a lot of teams. We the Lions at 29, Byron. Yeah. The Lions at 29 would – because that – that was one of their Achilles heels um, last year was uh, the defensive side of the ball, not the D line, but the defensive uh, backfield. Um, so the Vikings and the Cardinals have two picks in the first round. Yep. yep. Listen, so, the Cardinals, wait, I was saying the, the Cardinals best round get Marvin Harrison Jr. and get, uh, you know, Terry Arnold, Kool Aid Mitchell, I mean, Kool Aid McKinstry. You know what I'm saying? What 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 a hit in the first round if you know if it goes that way. And like you mentioned, the 49ers at 31, of course, the Ravens at 30, and the Chiefs at 32. Real quick, Avante, we did four corners: Nate Wiggins, Quinion Mitchell, Terry Arnold, and Kool Aid McKinstry. Rank them real quick for the people. Um, man, I think I think I think Mitchell, I think Mitchell's one. I think, ooh, I think Nate Wiggins might be two. I think I think Nate Nate Williams might be two, and the Alabama boys would be three and four. I like Terry Arnold Knight, then then Kool Aid McKinstry at four. There you have it, the draft guru himself, the commander, lawyer, and Cravante. This wraps up our cornerback draft previews, but we'll be back with our next group of position players. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that like button, hit that bell, sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on each of the draft profiles and any players you may want us to cover on the Flex Zone Podcast. Cravante, only place give me that draft coverage how you want it. When you need it, we'll be back with more draft profiles as we head towards the NFL draft.